Welcome to the official Euro Village podcast series, hosted by Rotterdam Nieuwe, live from het Nieuwe Instituut. Give a warm welcome to your hosts, Pim Roggeve and Hugo van der Kooi. We're live. Uh, welcome to the series about the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. Um, Hugo, nice to have you here on this very inspiring location. Um, we're here at the Nieuwe Instituut, the Museum for Architecture, Design and Digital Culture. Well, look around you. I mean, uh, this is the beauty of Rotterdam, I think. Uh, don't you agree? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Welcome to the guest uh, as well. Um, uh, introduction, uh, uh, Wesley van den Bos, uh, director of around uh, Zero Ten events, <laughs> around your team events. Yeah. Zero Ten is the, the phone code for Rotterdam. Uh, and next to me is uh, uh, Timon de Laat, a visual artist and muralist and the creator of the beautiful mural of jean Gu McCroy, which is next to Ahoy Rotterdam. Um, warm welcome to you both on this special location for this special edition of the podcast. Thank you very much, man. Um, Wesley, you're the director of Around 19. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about uh, what Around 19 is? Well, um, we are uh, a Rotterdam uh, uh, event company, of course. Uh, started out uh, three years ago as a sort of a city walk, doing tours uh, in the city, uh, which came from a, a, a crazy passion f- from me for the city of Rotterdam. And my friend said, oh, please shut up with your stories and go and do <laughs> something with it. Uh, So that's what I started out and then I had the idea not to do that for like only tourists or uh, private people but to do that for uh, company events and the main goal was to show how beautiful and how fantastic uh, this city is because even when you travel in the Netherlands a lot of people uh, always tell you "Ah, Rotterdam no I never go there because that's like a very ugly city it was bombed it's only concrete and horrible and then I say well have you when was the last time you were there yeah like 15 years ago <laughs> yeah. so much has changed in like five the last five to ten years and it's still changing it's yeah. changing every day i mean um, this wasn't here for like one, uh, one and a half years ago yeah well you know what uh like jules dilder eh, who used to be the night mayor of uh, rotterdam mm-hmm. uh unfortunately deceased uh said when the central station was finished he had like this little story and at the end he said uh, that the, the guy from Rotterdam in the train said to an a-, a guy from Amsterdam at the Hague, I don't know what this is, it wasn't there this morning. So yeah. Th- I mean yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but, uh, but so, so we evolved in the last three years uh, f- from doing those city walks to uh, a full round uh, event company. Uh, so for <coughs> um, businesses, uh, we uh, arrange uh, a weekend, a day, an afternoon and we arrange everything, but we give it like the local Rotterdam sauce uh, over it. So only with local entrepreneurs, um, we arrange uh, events. And then uh, um, we were asked three years ago also to do something with Make It Happen. Make It Happen is like the, uh, the city slogan, uh, mm-hmm. the brand yeah. alliance uh, in, uh, uh, in, the, in the city. Um, and that evolved for doing more and more and more for Make It Happen. And we are now an uh, alliance partner uh, and uh, a Eurovision partner. So and that's why we're here, I think. And what are some of the uh, the events that you guys are doing uh, in the city during uh, during Eurovision? Uh, well, we don't do events during Eurovision. Uh, we do events for companies. Right. And mm-hmm. those are always... And just tours during Eurovision. Always custom made. And we do the tours. Right. Like a tour partner. Mm-hmm. And we uh, also do some creative concepts lately. So we made three countdown movies for um, make it happen uh, and we had the countdown movies the countdown to the final of the eurovision song contest so we did the creative concepts for 100 days 20 days and there it comes 10 days and that's uh that was my favorite uh, number because 10 zero 10 yeah there we go <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> you have the soul of the city right so uh and that's that that's movie uh, was a big surprise mm-hmm Timon, also a warm welcome to you. Um, you're a uh, Rotterdam-based visual artist. I think the city is your canvas. Uh, tell me a bit more about how you uh, came to be like a visual artist and muralist. Uh, that's a long the story. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, short geez. version. <laughs> short version. Uh, I like to paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very short version. <laughs> Four words. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. The, I, I did the Academy of Arts right here in, uh, in Rotterdam, um, where I studied to be an art director. I didn't really... Uh, feel that 
what I was learning there was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So after uh, finishing school, I went uh, on a trip and I traveled uh, from Mexico to Argentina, just kind of have some time for myself and uh, uh, think about where I would like to go, what I would like to do. Um, but I had a very sparse budget, so I had like 3,000 bucks, which made it uh, 8,000 uh, or 8 euros a day, uh, um, which meant that I, I kind of had to avoid all the touristy places. Mm -hmm. uh, and this way I, I got in touch with like the local people more than uh, the, the other travelers. Uh, and therefore, um, I got to see their culture, um, the way they lived, uh, their approach to life. And uh, uh, they were so so hospitable and, and so open. Uh, something that really touched me uh, that I, I felt like inspired by this and also by the freedom of traveling. So when I, when I got back, I was thinking about like, what do I want to do with my life? And how can I arrange it like to have like this optimal sense of, of quality, you know, like this freedom. Um, and for me, that would be painting. So um, I started to paint actually for the freedom, like to, oh. to be able to, uh, uh, to fulfill your life or to set it up the way you do. And that's kind of where, uh, where it started. But yeah, my drawing skills weren't like uh, uh, up to par, I would say. I, I thought I always would learn like how to draw in the academy. Uh, and I had the realization that when I finished, that that was actually not the case. Um, so uh, I, I played around for 10 years. I, I painted a, a lot of stuff, um, some nice things, some absolute bollocks. <laughs> um, Was it already, uh, were it already uh, murals back then or, or you started out with canvases? Well, actually, I, I, I did paint on that trip. I, uh, I painted in a couple of hostels in, uh, in Ecuador, for example, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, uh, to pay for my nights. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was painting walls there. But it, it was just painting something uh, that, that I, I liked at the time. Uh, and there wasn't really the, this uh, notion that I, w I wanted to be a muralist or, or an mm -hmm. artist. Uh, it was just something that I enjoyed. What do you think, uh, looking back at those paintings or thinking about those paintings you painted back in those days, what do you think about them right now, if you <laughs> we see those? Yeah, the, well, usually w w when I paint stuff uh, and, and I look back on it like a couple of years later, then I'm, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> You're not no. a fan. No. It's funny that you say that uh, you got your inspiration from um, Southern American um, countries. And, uh, not, it totally makes sense when I, when I think about your art right now. I totally see that, see yeah. the, the, the influences in your, in your art. It's um, just humanity in general, I think, and just the, the, the sense of traveling and discovering. So it's, for me now, it, it is, is based predominantly on Latin America. Right. But, but that's mm -hmm. not necessarily the... Uh, but thinking, thinking, uh, to thinking about the, uh, the Jean Gu uh, art piece you did, you see the, the mm -hmm. colorful paintings in his face and stuff. Yeah. I was just wondering, first of all, I think it's beautiful. It's, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, how long did it take you to do that? Uh, 12 days I, I painted. 12 days? It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, 12 days of painting. Um, How, like, what time do you start and what time do you finish? Or you call it a day? Uh, yeah, so I, I would get there like at 9 o'clock in the morning and then depending on the weather, mm -hmm. uh, I would paint uh, till, uh, till the sunset. Um, yeah, but it, it, the, the, of course, that just the days of painting was, I think, from the, the 6th of April till the, uh, what was it, the, the, the 14th or the, the, the 12th or somewhere there. Um, which was uh, which was nice um, and, and and really uh, like enjoying the the atmosphere at the wall. But the, the the weather that week, especially the first week, wasn't uh, wasn't the best. How do you cope with the rain when you're painting snow? Yeah, yeah. Snow, snow. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. It's snow as yeah. well. It was a snowstorm and hail and stuff like this. Well, the the, the thing is, on the fourth of April, I put up a, a base coat, which was yeah. a, a a water base coat. Uh, and they said like the day after is going to be dry, so we kind of needed that to uh, yeah. to to dry it off. And then after that, I worked with spray cans and spray cans. Uh, well, it's it's not ideal to paint in the rain, but uh, it, it is it is doable. You didn't have a choo cho choice. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. deadlines. You know, yeah. uh, in, in Rotterdam we say "Need lullen maar Need lullen maar verven." Yeah, need yeah. lullen maar yeah. In English, that is make it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make, make it happen. It happen. Yeah. Exactly. Make it happen. So I thought like, well, let, let's put uh, a word uh, word to practice. You know. I would, uh, I would totally see, I can imagine that it, it would be amazing to have your mural at Ahoy and just have a permanent artwork in public space. How, how does that feel? Because you have, next to the Jungu uh, art piece, you have several yeah. more uh, in and around Rotterdam. Yeah. How does it feel to have your permanent signature on the city of Rotterdam? Yeah, th this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to at the moment. Uh, it, but I love it. Like, uh, it's a crazy idea for me that you have such a, 
well, permanent stamp on on such uh, such predominant uh, buildings. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really <laughs> thought about it that way. No, or yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 that's not why I'm that's not why I'm, I'm I'm doing it. It's just because I like to paint, and 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 of course I want to be one of those people that is involved in the city and and, and helps to build it, and uh, um, at the same time tell my story, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and. Uh, this is now like with this whole Eurovision thing, it's it's kind of getting to a next level, uh, which is amazing to see. And and now I'm starting to realize what impact these things also have on uh, on a bigger scale. Yeah. So um, perfect introduction for our international listeners to the Dutch soberness mentality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we all know the the tagline of the uh, this edition of the Song Festival is open up. Um, Wesley, what does this mean to you? Well, at first I thought it, uh, <laughs> when, when they uh, announced uh, the theme a year and a half ago, I thought, okay, open up and make it happen. That could be a little strange uh, uh, in regards to the 80% of the audience that comes to the uh-huh. vision. But that's all I say about it. Yeah, yeah. But then, <laughs> I see um, where you come from. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, along the way, you see that open up is is a perfect theme for this Eurovision because it's uh, the city of Rotterdam opening up to show itself to the world, but also opening up to the people uh, in the city. Mm-hmm. And now with uh, the coronavirus, uh, yeah. that means that are the people of Rotterdam and mm-hmm. maybe some people from the Netherlands. But we will not uh, be having a lot of foreign uh, visitors, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And then you see how this city is uh, working together and helping each other and uh, one of the movies we made for um, uh, Make It Happen mm-hmm. uh, for the countdown was uh, about diversity and the diversity uh, and the inclusiveness in this city. And so we had uh, all different kind of groups on different uh, uh, places in Rotterdam uh, shot and then uh, they came together at Eendrachtsplein. At yeah. the about a bit plug. I yes. don't know how to uh, <laughs> say that in English. But uh, and they, they celebrate this city and celebrate that we live here together uh, in well with a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so I think for me open up uh, is is the diversity and living together and working together and making this city better and um, yeah, that what does it mean to you? Open up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think it's it for me it's also part of a state of mind, like an attitude towards life. I think that's uh, important to be curious and to uh, to investigate, n- not to close yourself off, uh, to, to leave opportunity to reach you and for you to reach opportunity. Um, with me, I'd like the um, for me the the theme open up really works uh, because of my passion for travel, uh, and that's one of the things that you really need to do when you when you go and travel. Uh, so that's automatically where I saw the link as well when they uh, introduced the the, the theme. Um, and uh, and they show the video. So yeah, for me it's it's a perfect uh, causeway yeah. to to get to uh, to get my work involved in this as well. Yeah, exactly. I think it's really in- interesting to see that um, such a short, compact tagline is so um, it's so uh, applicable to so many inter- interpretations. Mm. It also has a literal that. meaning because all we're trying to do as a world right now in yeah. regards to the coronavirus is exactly. literally opening yeah. up to the world again and to each other and. Yeah. Being able to travel to other countries, meeting new people, that's so such a big part of, I think, who we are as human beings. Yeah, I was actually wondering, like, w- was this, this theme was already there before the corona came, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So yeah. Like, this is like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's future vision right that's there. That's future vision, yeah. yeah. yeah that's no awesome. coincidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did the Simpsons make this? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Might be conspiracy. Yeah. Hey, Wesley. <laughs> Wesley, you said uh, uh, you made a good point about the the, the audience this year for uh, Eurovision. Yeah. Um, uh, so so predominantly o- only national tourists, um, obviously because of the coronavirus. Um, I, w- I was thinking uh, about your tours. Um, what things and what interesting things in Rotterdam do you want to show to the uh, national audience? I mean, we got several highlights. Like the, the mm. big depot is beautiful. But um, are you planning on getting? You were talking about the, the local experience during tours. How are yeah. you gonna? How are you gonna do that? Well, the thing is that um, uh, we will be uh, touring around uh, the delegations. 
So that will be nice. Uh, uh, as How many delegations are you hosting uh, with the tours? Uh, 11 or 12, I think. Okay. So uh, 11 or 12 countries. Um, and there we, had, we, chosen, we have chosen, of course, also because of COVID, to do like three teams. Mm -hmm. um, one is the, like, the, the, they call it the big five. Uh, so then you go to like uh, uh, the cube houses, mm -hmm. uh, Marks Hall, uh, Central Station. Mm -hmm. And we do the by touring car. Uh, we do... Um, like an open touring car? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, not even a touring car where you can look in. Because okay. <laughs> no, because of course you don't want a, uh, um, a lot of people around the bus. Yeah. And, uh, well, we all know where that goes to. Mm -hmm. And um, we do uh, um, uh, a port, of uh, a river uh, tour, which is really cool. And then we're going to use... Uh, On the water, water taxi? Yes, oh, exactly. Cool. Which is really cool, because I think that is one of the most... Uh, uh, great uh, transport ways of transport we have in this city. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, uh, we always use that in our events. People should go on the water taxi, and uh, well, you don't even have to go anywhere. You can go from the same point, just cross the river yeah. and back, and that's perfect. Yeah. So th we're gonna do that one, and then we're gonna do uh, a boat tour to um, one of the most historic places in Rotterdam, Delfshaven. So mm. uh, cool. Yeah. And how cool. big are the delegations of the countries that are? Well, it depends, of Your course, on uh, on how big uh, their group is, uh, how many people they, they bring, but mostly it's like uh, uh, 20, 15 to 20 people with the artists. And, and it also depends on who's coming, because maybe the artist says, well, no, I'm not coming because I have to practice my voice. <laughs> or uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. afraid to get a cold. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Know. I, I, d I did request to see some countries. Can I make a... <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. I was wondering what were, what was your um, for both of you guys what what were your first personal impressions about uh, Eurovision? I mean, it's a it's a it's a one of the biggest, maybe the biggest event of the whole world. Um, everyone has a, um, a thinks something about Eurovision. It's predominantly, of course, like a big positive party. Did you did you did you watch it like the 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 last couple of years? Did you did you stay at home? Well, or is this the year that you that you got? <laughs> I, I don't think you did. Do you? Do you? No, actually, I, I, oh, I, really? I, yeah. Well, um, to, to say I'm a fan is a big word, but I uh, but uh, but I have uh, I've seen it uh, uh, several times. Like uh, I think three three four years ago, I was with my family uh, on vacation in Portugal, and uh, we watched it there, which was uh, which was fun. Um, I think in 2018, I was in Sweden, and that was the final of uh, was it 2019. The final between the Netherlands and Sweden, mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah, 2019. So we watched it. We watched it there, which was uh, which was fun. Um, I mean, I, 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 it's such a big production, you know. There's so much going on. There's so much thought put into the whole process, and it's super. Like a mini Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah in, in a way, it is, and and, and it's, it's ridiculous to think that it has a, as many views as uh, I think as a Super Bowl in the states. Well, mini mini Olympics. It's like the biggest live music event in the world. Yeah, so it's, it is. It's crazy. Yeah, and, uh, a lot of people that don't follow Eurovision or another big fan, which are a lot, uh, they don't realize how big it really is. And it also yeah. differs uh, per country, actually, because I saw the final uh, where Duncan won in uh, yeah, yeah. in France. Yeah. So I was really like crazy because I am a big fan and I watched it since I was, like, I don't know, six. <laughs> um, so you were absolutely went, crazy when they yeah, were Yeah, and I won, went yeah. outside and we, we were going to bars and stuff and everywhere I came in, we won, we won. And the French were like, <laughs> what did you win? <laughs> what? what are you saying? <laughs> so I was like, okay, after like 40 plus years, we win and I'm in the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> so that was horrible. But um, no, uh, I, I love the Eurovision. And, and now you actually get to work yeah. for <coughs> Eurovision. How cool yeah. is that as a yeah. fan? Really yeah. cool. Really cool. And uh, but also in the historic edition, I mean, some people would regard this edition as, a, as one that's uh, not the full experience, I think, because mm -hmm. we can do a lot of things we would like to do. But I think this 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 Rotterdam uh, edition is going into the history books. Well, uh, at first, it's the second year we are naming yeah. Rotterdam <laughs> as the host. So I mean, we we're, the we only we're country taking everything out of it. it huh? <laughs> times, yeah. um, and and I think also that people will remember this because it's a it's a weird time and it's a yeah it's a, it, I think it's got, it's a beautiful way the way Rotterdam is hosting this Eurovision with all the well with with the less possibilities they have. And I think. Uh, 
trying to make the most of it, right? Yeah, I think this 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 will be a uh, uh, one to remember in the books. Yeah. yeah. How close are you going to get during the during the event? I mean, you're you're going to do the tours with all the delegations. Is there any chance you're going to get into Ahoy and just sneak in, or is that not something for <laughs> for? It's a fort. It's a literal <laughs> fortress. Yeah. Uh, okay, I must say I have two tickets for the final. <laughs> there, <you go. laughs> there you go. There you go. What about you? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have any tickets. Uh, I, I didn't but even know that that was a possibility. Yeah. The only thing you have to say is just go to Ahoy and say, hey, you see that? You have yeah. Jean-Guy <laughs> artwork? That's me. Let me in. I would say if you don't let me in, I will just spray paint all over. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to destroy it. it. <laughs> what is, uh, Timo, for you, um, I mean, um, like uh, Wesley said, there's a lot of international viewers who will also will be viewing, I think, your, mm -hmm. your, your important mural. Do you think there will be a lot of um, uh, uh, countries or, or, or uh, that will want to have such a thing f uh, from you as well? You mean like uh, yeah, f future jobs coming from this? Exactly. Maybe do a Eurovision oh tour. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It w would be nice uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, to, to paint a bit more abroad. But uh, to take it back a step, like uh, the, the mural is only part uh, of, uh, of the street art project. And mm -hmm. uh, th for me, I think it's, first of all, a really big compliment that the city wants to identify itself as a street art city as well. Uh, I think that's a, that's a big step into the right direction. Uh, lucky for me that that I'm involved this time, but I, uh, I I do hope that they do that with other artists as well. Um, but we're doing this project called Upstreet Rotterdam, uh, which is part of the city dressing campaign, uh, yeah. together with Hip Hop in Small and uh, Rotterdam Make It Happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and and what what I like about this is that uh, well I got to paint the mural, uh, but together with these guys we also developed a concept called the Embrace, which is going to be an art installation uh, painting on uh, uh, I think it's ten or twelve uh, containers kind of the building blocks of Rotterdam, you know, because Rotterdam is yeah. a harbor city. Um, and there where, where will that take place? Uh, I think this will be in front of Ahoy as well. So there everything is going to be centered around mm -hmm. that area. And during it's going to be like a buzz, contest. you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, just before. And okay, I think yeah. uh, I think during. So people can go there and have a, have a look. And uh, just, it's the big five, what you were talking about as well, like the, the big five uh, countries. I think the, the most popular are winning countries and the host country uh, that are having artists coming over and, and paint there. Uh, live and these are all, uh, from what I understand, uh, artists that are just about to uh, to step into the limelight. Yeah. So super interesting. Um, so they they also give like a, a next generation opportunity. Upcoming talents. Yeah. So this inclusivity n is not only about your your religion or your your uh, sexual uh, preference uh, preference or it's 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 about everything. You know, uh, uh, like it's inclusive uh, yeah. throughout the whole spectrum, and I, I find that very interesting. Yeah, that's what I like about uh, Eurovision in general. It's 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 uh, known, of course, for first and foremost uh, for the the uh, the tolerance. It's a it's a it's a big big event for the the queer community of course mm -hmm. but it's tolerant for everything it's yeah. and, and to hear that it's even tolerant for for up and coming artists it's uh it just fits even for them even for them that's <laughs> yeah. that fits in the whole image of uh, of eurovision yeah there's only one humanity right there yeah. you go yeah. exactly hey i was wondering um you you obviously you do uh, lots of more a lot more uh, painting uh, all over the city you um one that I specifically like very much is the one we, we talked about for the show um, as well, is the one with the door. Yeah. The, it's at Keilewerk, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Van Helmondstraat. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, with the sliding door for the Stichting de Nieuwe Kans. Yeah. Can, you tell, can you elaborate on that? Um, yeah, so th this is a mural that I, I, I finished like a week before I started on, uh, on, on Eurovision. Um, and it's on the, the side of a building wh which has a garage uh, door. Uh, and that was kind of an obstacle. And I was trying to find a way to, uh, to make that into an advantage, let's say. Uh, so uh, in order to get the whole composition on the wall, I, uh, I, I thought, oh, well, maybe I can incorporate the garage door as well. Uh, and there you see a portrait of a young man. Um, like the Stichting the Nieuwe Gans is a place where they uh, give a chance to kids that have kind of strayed from the, the straight and narrow and uh, maybe had a, a bit of a difficult uh, a childhood, um, yeah, like being uh, raised. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, w what I tried to do was actually uh, is uh, portray one of these kids on the front of the, uh, of the place, um, like his portrait. Uh, and where you see him taking off his hoodie and uh, stepping into the light, kind of starting the process of, of his reintegration, let's yeah. say. Uh, and uh, the sliding door is kind of an extra uh, effect. It, it, it's hard to, to put this in. No, but it, it looks no, like, no, no. It it looks like it, he takes off his hoodie and it, yeah. he puts on his hoodie while, yeah. while you're sliding the door. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's an amazing... It's really for the, for the, for the 
for a new life in, in that sense. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Really so cool. it's a, it's a bit of a peekaboo. Amazing. Yeah. Hey, uh, I was wondering wh- what is you guys' life after uh, Eurovision? Because you're so focused on being a part of Eurovision. <laughs> is it one big black hole, or do you got stuff planned uh, planned ahead? Well, Wesley, maybe you want to go first. Yeah. Well. Um what if the tours are done? What what's no yeah what's, well, what's well, going the, up? well the thing is the tours is actually we something we don't do that much anymore so mm-hmm. it's really on the events, uh, but the, the um, a very positive thing we got out of working for the Eurovision is the creative concept side, so we did the three like I said uh, th- uh, three movies, mm-hmm. and now uh, I get phone calls from uh, companies saying oh we saw that you did those movies, um, and we, uh, I mean we the production and everything uh, is somewhere else, but we did like the concepts. Mm-hmm. Um, can you make one for us or can you help us? Uh, which is really nice. So we're, we're, we're sort of rolling into a new... Uh, uh All new industry. Yeah, and, and that's really cool. And of course, I, uh, I hope that from September uh, we will be able to do more events. And uh, events is like uh, uh, take care of uh, the, the weekend uh, for a company. and. Uh, um, that's not really a possibility because there are no bars. There's no, exactly. you know. You so can do can a street art tour if you want. Yeah. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. We have, talk, buddy. We, we have a talk. street. We <laughs> no, 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 no. We uh, we have a street art tour. We do yeah. because the street art is part of also Rotterdam. Make it happen. Yeah. So um, the identity of Rotterdam as well. Exactly, because yeah. c- you were just saying uh, that uh, that you d- like the fact that the street art is being presented in the Eurovision. But I think everything what Make It Happen stands for is being presented in uh, this presentation. Mm-hmm. And that includes uh, street art. We are doing awesome. a lot of it uh, with... Cool. So, yeah. Wesley and, uh, and Timon, can I uh, thank you both for, uh, for your attendance? Before we go, um, <laughs> I'm very curious to hear. I mean, you're a big fan. Yeah. What is your all-time favorite Eurovision Oh, story? yeah, there you go. Uh, As a fan. Because yeah. we are, we're here, with the, this is the uh, part of the city direction <coughs> where we're looking at right now, of yeah. course. It's, it's, um, um, it's also on every building almost in, in, in the entire city. It's, it's amazing to see so many different flags and, 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 and song. All uh, the lyrics. Yeah. All the lyrics and the songs uh, being uh, lit- literally um, uh, portrayed on, on the city itself. Um, tell me. Well, uh, but then I will... Uh Tell you my age, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I'm uh, I, of course arcade. When I heard, no, uh, that's not my favorite, but arcade. When I when I heard this, which song, is from Duncan Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, immediately said, okay, we're gonna win this. Yeah, this, yeah? this is I gonna happen. Track. The uh, first time you heard it, yeah. you were like, this yeah, yeah, yeah. is us. And not to be a wise guy, but I, I actually, yeah. and people said, no, we we never win. I said, this one, we're gonna win it. I'm sure. You say uh, that every year? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, and I, I will not talk about uh, the entire period between 1999 and 2013 when Anouk uh, finally appeared again. Yeah. But um, uh, I think still my favorite, but it's because I grew up with it, is Ding a Dong. I mean, it's oh, so yeah. cheerful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, it's so cheerful. And she's so very nice. Like very you're nice really thing. old then. I'm really old. <laughs> I, thought, I knew you were old, but not that old. There's three bald <laughs> men here. <laughs> and you're saying... And this is so exactly old. what he didn't want to happen. Really, yeah. really, really old. <laughs> He's uh. really happy with you now, yeah. Uh. <laughs> no, but I, I think that one's really nice. Uh, but I, I, uh, behind uh, Timon, I see uh, Jemme Jemme, yeah. which is, yep. of course, also a very... Uh, uh, our Belgian uh, yeah. winner, Jemme Jemme La Vie. Yeah. So, uh, and you, Timon, you have a... Uh, one a favorite song or favorite year you well, look back at? Yeah, well, the, the, what I what I like uh, for is it just because I dove a bit more into it is the the new song from uh, from Jean Gu. Yeah, the the whole the whole story behind it as well, and and, and what it says and w- what I try to convey kind of in the wall. So uh, even though it's not been uh, uh, added to the official uh, release yet, so yeah. Uh, I, I, I just for the thought of it, uh, I, I really like that, and I think Arcade was very epic. Like uh, I, I did really feel like okay, so that that is a song that that is a good contender. Yeah, really good. Awesome. Yeah. Although, yeah. if I can say one more thing, um, yes, it, you can. it's not a Eurovision song, but the song uh, which will appear in uh, the clip of Ten Days for Make It Happen mm-hmm. is especially made for the city and for this uh, for this clip. It's called Make It Happen, and it's sung by Sherma Rouse. Yeah, sure. Okay. You all know. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've heard it. It's wow. Yeah. Like, she's doing a dance song. She awesome. never did a dance. Over when there. will it be released? Uh, well, on the 12th of May, 10 days before the final. So okay. she's, it's going to be at the countdown clock. 
Amazing. And Which is I actually behind the depot right here. Yeah, we can't see you right now. We're really close. But I think it's, I, I will uh, say this, I think this can be a summer hit. There you go. Yeah, I can't wait to well. hear that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. I will, show, I will let. Awesome. Thank you guys um, um, for being here today with us and the, uh, the first, uh, the kickoff of these, uh, this Euro Village uh, podcast series. Are you going to watch? If, if I'm going to watch? Yeah. Of course I'm going to watch. <laughs> What do you think? With I friends. didn't know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Um, thank you for today. Um, and good luck uh, with uh, both of your future uh, lives. Thanks. Uh, enjoy your vision, of course. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Hugo, for being here today. Thanks, Pim. See you again uh, soon. <laughs> Ciao. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Did you enjoy this show? Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends and family. Open up to Rotterdam. <laughs>